We've studied magnetic forces and also looked at their sources. And it's now time to investigate what happens when we change a magnetic field, the effect it has in the surrounding space and on objects, particularly wires and coils, in their vicinity. That will lead us to all kinds of very marvelous technological outcomes. And we will then have the background to describe what's known as Maxwell's equations, which are equations which describe all the phenomena of electromagnetism. So we're just going to cut to the chase and tell you what this effect is, known as electromagnetic induction. And what it is is simply changing a magnetic field in the vicinity of a coil or a wire. So we induce an EMF. And the possibilities are if you move the magnetic field. So here we have a magnetic field established around a coil that's brought out to a meter. And you could take this magnetic field and move it out of the coil. You could move the coil itself, or a conductor for that matter, move it. You can vary the current. Here's a current knob that adjusts the size of the magnetic field. You can vary the orientation. So if I took this coil and rotated it, it would also have an effect that is denoted by a deflection of the meter one way or the other. So the key thing for all of this is that there is a time rate of change of magnetic flux. In other words, d phi sub dt is not zero. So this induces an EMF. It's called an induced EMF. That changing magnetic field produces a voltage, establishes an EMF within the conductor, causing a current to flow. And it's proportional to the rate at which that magnetic flux changes. So let's discuss flux a little bit again. So here's a magnetic field going through our generalized surface with our little differential patch. There's B. And there's dA, and of course, perpendicular to the little surface area element is dA vector. And now we have the parallel to the area, B field, and the perpendicular to the area. With an angle between those, so it's really the angle between the B field and the area vector, phi. So d phi sub B is B dot dA, B dot dA, B perpendicular dA. BDA cosine of phi. So phi, just the integral of all the B dot DAs. Go over the whole surface. The induced EMF in a closed loop equals the negative of the time rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. That is an important statement. That statement is specified by this equation, which is known as Faraday's law. EMF induced is equal to minus d phi sub b dt. Well, let's quick do a Faraday example. In this case, we have a magnetic field produced between these poles here. Upward, we have a loop of current in that magnetic field. And that magnetic field is changing at 0.02 teslas per second. And we see a deflection on the meter, the little galvanometer that's hooked to the coil. And the coil has 5 ohms of resistance. So find the induced EMF and the induced current in the loop. So first of all, the area. There it is. And B is parallel to the area vector. So this is A vector. Area vector, not just A vector. Not any old a vector but the area vector the flux is then b dot da which is this b a so the magnetic flux b a so d phi sub b d t this is the essence of faraday's law is the induced emf since the area is constant then d phi sub b d t the flux being b a a constant it's the rate at which b changes times that area is going to give you the induced emf so it's 0.02 teslas per second times 0.012 meters squared, or um, 120 centimeters squared, centimeter, 0.01 times 0.01, okay. 
That gives us 2.4 times 10 to the negative 4 volts. That's the answer. Now, the current is just EMF over R. So divide that number by 5, and you get 0.048 milliamps. Very small induced current from the induced EMF. And now, to show you a key feature of Faraday's law, replace the conducting loop with a rubber band. So this is now a rubber band, non-conducting. Now Faraday's law says nothing about what's in the region of space through which the magnetic field is changing or the flux is changing in whatever way that happens. So it doesn't depend on the, on the resistance, for instance. So the EMF is just d phi sub e dt, which is 2.4 times 10 to negative 4 volts again. The resistance in this case is infinity. The current is simply zero, but there is an induced EMF in that region. And what about now the direction of the induced quantities? So we had this current flow, and what direction is the current flow in the loop? Well, I'll give you the simple answer real quick. Basically, anytime an induction effect occurs. When you have a changing flux in the loop, that changing flux induces an EMF that produces a current that makes a magnetic field whose magnetic field is oriented opposite of the direction of the original magnetic field. So magnetic field induced is going to be acting downward. So now you can stick your uh, thumb down in the direction of the induced magnetic field with your fingers encircling around this coil. That means with your right hand you have to grab the coil so that your thumb points down and this is the direction of the induced EMF and current. So that's the answer in brief and we'll describe that also in a little more detail. I want to now illustrate how we find the direction of the induced quantities. And if after this discussion you've decided it's too much explanation and you're actually confused, then do not despair. It's usually a lot easier, really quite easy, to find the direction of the induced quantities from basic principles. And I want to show you how this connects to the negative sign in front of Faraday's law, minus d phi sub e dt. Well, in any case, let's define positive vector a direction. And from the direction of that vector and the b field vector, determine the sign of the flux and the change in flux. So the right hand rule around a, take your grubby right hand and encircle your fingers around a, thumb pointing in the direction of a fingers point in the direction of the positive induced quantities EMF and I. So here's a loop of wire and here's the direction we're going to find A. We could go in the other direction, it would just everything would be consistent with it. So here's our B field and it's in the same direction as A, meaning there's a component of B in the direction of A. So phi is less than 90 and then we can say it's in the same direction as A. Moreover, B is going up in this case. So a little while later, the B field is larger. So since A and B are in the same direction, we just say that the flux is positive. That's not so important, actually. More important is D phi sub e dt is greater than zero. Namely, the flux is increasing in that positive direction. So there's a positive change in flux. D phi sub e dt is greater than zero and therefore the flux change is positive and we get then that the EMF is negative. The induced EMF is negative. Fingers circle in the opposite direction of the EMF and the I. So if you grab the A vector, your fingers and circle around in this direction, that's the opposite direction of the induced quantity. And really it's because that minus sign in front of Faraday's law. If the change in flux is positive, then the induced EMF is negative. So now let's reverse the direction, not of the flux. We're going to keep the flux the same, but the change in flux 
is such that it's going to reduce the magnetic field. So it's a negative rate of change. Or d phi sub e dt is less than zero. We still have positive flux, but now we have a negative change in flux, and that's the key. Negative change in flux means that our induced EMF is positive. So you'll see that if you encircle your right hand rule around A, that's the correct direction for the EMF and the I. So that's the direction of the induced quantities. And let's do one more, because what if we have the magnetic field going in the opposite direction? There it is, in the opposite direction. And so later on, also, well, let me just say, this B field here is increasing. In other words, I shouldn't say increasing, it's getting more positive. So this is where it can be a little confusing. It's getting more positive, so later on, since it's in the negative direction, it's smaller, because positive is in the direction of, in, of increasing in the direction of A. So later on, it's smaller, meaning that d phi sub e dt is greater than zero. It's a positive change. This magnetic field actually is getting smaller, right? So A and B are in opposite directions. That gives a negative flux, Again, that's not so important, but that the d phi sub e dt is less than zero says that the change in magnetic flux is positive, and so the induced EMF is negative. Figures the circle in opposite direction as the EMF and the I. So there it is. Okay. Notice that really the first and third scenario we have in both of these cases in the first case we have the flux positive it's getting larger in this direction same thing is happening here larger in the positive direction right smaller in the negative direction of course so if you're consistent with all this it will give you the proper directions for these induced quantities but again it'll usually be simpler to think through than this more detailed analysis and let's now enter into a discussion of some other related topics associated with induction effects.